Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. The Winter March, written by Mercury the Dina. Space warfare is about offense. It simply is a natural progression of combat. As a species advances, their offensive capabilities evolve faster and faster, to the point armor just can't keep up pace. You can change a couple things, of course. The Pumankni, for example, use gigantic carriers and battleships to break enemy lines. The Mulnave prefer to use hundreds of smaller carriers surrounded by hundreds of thousands of attackers to overwhelm with sheer numbers. Some have super-efficient hyperdrives to invade system after system before the defenders can prepare themselves. Others choose to invest on faster, normal engines so that they can do hit-and-run attacks better. But it is always about the offensive. On ground battles, that is also true. Orbital strikes make any slow-moving defense a sitting duck, just waiting to be blown from orbit. And yet again, everyone has their own little doctrine. Some stuff their troops with weapons, others like to make them fast and flexible. But the contrast is the same. From the highly specialized soldiers of the Electi to the gigantic bodies of the Vidium V, it is all about offensive. Until we met the humans, they were mildly impressive species when we found them. Just 400 years after first discovering FTL, they had already colonized over 200 systems. They had potential, and people love to exploit potential. Battle plans were set, meetings were made, treaties were signed. Everyone wanted a piece of humanity. The reason varied, of course. Some wanted them as slaves, others as citizens, Many just wanted their territory. Not one even thought about them winning. The only had railguns and no lasers. Sure, the railguns were much better than other kinetic weapons, but lasers were better for offense. Their armor was truly impressive, but it was heavy, making their mechanized units easy targets. They had even worse offensive capabilities, and war is about offense. All at once, everyone declared war on humanity. Human worlds fell again and again under the might of superior lasers and orbital bombardments. Sure, their sabotage and guerrilla tactics made things difficult, but none could stand against this offensive. Every world conquered simply fueled the offensive on. It was as easy as a summer's walk. Then all at once, everything stopped. No more supplies came from the conquered worlds, no more communications either. So the fleets went back to check what was happening Trash. Every planet they checked had trash floating around it, tons upon tons of trash in orbit forming a shield of garbage. Upon closer inspection, they found out why. The humans had built hundreds of gigantic railguns into every planet, hit them underground, and now were using them to throw trash into orbit. The admirals of every nation decided that they a sensible thing to do was to shoot the railguns down. Much to their horror, however, the trash shield prevented any orbital bombardments from getting close enough to shoot. Nothing was getting in or out of those planets. The soldiers down on the worlds would now have to fight an enemy with superior armor, superior organization, better knowledge of the terrain, and greater experience in attrition fighting. All without help of orbital bombardment or the ability to retreat out of the planets. This wasn't the worst part, however. Most of the supplies needed by the fleets were being supplied by the conquered worlds, which meant now their lifeline had suddenly been cut while deep in enemy territory. Some tried to push on, but the humans had concentrated all of their forces and were now shredding the enemy forces. Some tried to retreat, but the humans had recorded how their fleets moved, so the moment they appeared in the system they would be immediately shot by thousands of previously hidden railguns. Advance and face a bloodthirsty enemy by yourself. Retreat and watch as your forces crumble before the storm of human shots. Hold your position and let your soldiers starve. Suddenly, every admiral and every nation had realized something truly terrible. Their summer walk had just become a winter march. End of story. Story number two. Back Problems, written by LG Father Anthracite. What do you want? Hey, take it easy. I'm here to check up on you. 
Martin was pretty cranky sounding, so I used my most soothing tone. Back off, D. I know you're just here to poke around for your personal research project. I'm not in the mood today. Oh, oh. He tried to shoot me off, but suddenly tensed in pain. Are you okay? I asked, coming a little closer and trying to reach out with my lower support arms. Martin smacked them away, took a deep breath, and sat bolt upright. I'll be fine. Once you stop goofing around and let me rest. What happened? He sighed deeply. Perhaps he was getting used to my endless questions, or perhaps resign is the better way to put it. And threw a lie back. Probably overdid it yesterday with the support column for replacement. He rubbed his lower back with one hand. I'll be fine tomorrow. I just need a rest. Why would you dispose of your back? It's where your main nerve channel is. I again confused by human speech. Ugh, perfect. I mean, I knocked it out of whack, out of alignment. I probably just strained a muscle yesterday. A day of rest and some mild anti-inflammatories and I'll be fine. But I thought your body had limiters to keep you from hurting yourself. How is it possible for you to hurt a muscle when you should not be able to? Humans were notorious for being ridiculously strong in relation to their size. But it was also known that they were incapable of exerting their full strength except in the most dire of circumstances. Geralt, I'm not a doctor. I'm an engineer. All I can tell you is that when I was swapping out small columns yesterday, I used one of the muscles in my back too much, but too long, or I turned funny. And now it hurts. Beads of sweat were starting to dot Martin's brow, and he was clenching his jaw as he spoke. If I had actually exerted full force with my muscles, I would have fractured a bone or torn a connective tissue. This is muscle tissue soreness, which is actually super common. Go check the data net for muscle strain. I'm going to lie down now. Talk to you later. Martin slowly stood up and shuffled slowly from the room. Geralt, please report to engineering. We have a situation. The automated announcement plays in my crew cabin, so I dress in my work harness and head to work. What is the problem? I ask once I arrive. There was a meteorite debris that made it past the shields. There's a damaged bulkhead that needs repair. I nodded my understanding, a gesture that I'd picked up from Martin. I grab the relevant printout and start loading up the tools onto a cart. After setting up a work zone perimeter and locking down the sector of the ship, I started laying out tools and supplies. There is a small hole about the size of a sheng nut, but which has been temporarily patched. I need to set up a small containment field and then remove the damaged area with a plasma torch and replace it with a bit of plasteel from our supplies. The temporary patches would only hold for a few hours before the polymer that they were made from would start to lose strength. I had set up a fuel generator and was finalizing my plasma torch setup when Martin arrived. He had brought a collapsible chair, which he promptly set up and sat in. Ranking maintenance engineer reporting for repair as per regulations. You should have called me, D. He looked even more annoyed than earlier. I thought you were resting. I replied as I completed the plasma torch setup. I still need to do my job. Besides, can't have you getting dinged on my watch. Looks bad for both of us. Make sure you set the gas regulator properly, he said, eyes roving over all of the other preparations I had done. Night, I said, and finished my setup. He sat in his chair and watched silently as I sliced away the damaged plate and started welding with the patch. I was halfway through when the alarm started. Debris field, race for multiple impacts, repeat, race for multiple impacts. I got off the torch, and when I turned around, Martin was already moving down the hall. Keep seeding the patch. I'll evacuate the section, just in case. He called over his shoulder. I could hear him chasing other crewmen out of the section. I focused on the patch. Only a few more moments, and it would be complete. I wake up in a bright room. I cannot move. As I struggle, I see someone move into view. The reluctant be calm. It is I, Dr. Mpa. The IORK. I have restraining field on you to immobilize the damaged walking limb. What happened? I asked as the last thing I remember rushing to finish the patch. You were hurt when the ship took a hit, knocked you against the hull, and a gas cylinder fell and caught your leg. Martin carried you in. Don't worry, you finished the patch before you got hurt. Good job, Dr. Mba said, patting my lower support arm. Is Martin okay? I'll be fine. Just need a few days. I heard a gruff voice. I rolled my head over to see Martin hanging upside down from a contraption by his ankles, his arms dangling above his head. 
You were hurt? I asked. You are kind of heavy, and lifting this gas cylinder kind of sucked too, now that I'm thinking about it. And now my back is actually damaged. Don't worry, Doc's got me on some good painkillers. I could do without the gravity boots, though. He tore a lattice from his dorsi muscle while lifting you. I've given him a shot of nanobots, just like you. You should be fine in a couple days, Dr. Imba says as he checks the instruments. I thought you were hurt before. What was I supposed to do? Leave you there bleeding? You're on your own for the next few days, so try not to get knocked out again. Besides, a hurt back and damaged muscles are two different things. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astraea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.